She is a amazing coach from Scotland. And you all know that's my favorite accent in the whole world. She's an amazing coach from Scotland that is all about change and transformation. Thank you so much for joining us today for International Women's Day. We are here to celebrate. Um, We like to celebrate women all the time around here, but today's an extra special day. I have a fabulous guest with me. This is my dear friend from across the pond, Kirsty, who is soon to be an international bestselling author. Today is the kickoff of her brand new book launch. I'm so honored that you're here. Christy is this amazing human that has this ability, like no one I've ever met before, to know exactly what to say the minute that you need to hear it. She is a amazing coach from Scotland and you all know that's my favorite accent in the whole world. She's an amazing coach from Scotland that is all about change and transformation. I am so honored that you're here. Kirsty. thank you so much for being here today. Oh, Tracy, it's my absolute pleasure. And um, it's just the, the kind of finishing frosting on the cake for International Women's Day for me. So thank you so much for having me on the show. It was one of those moments that could not have been um, planned. You know, I am the type of person that I I can over plan. I mean, you guys don't know that about me, right? That's hilarious. I can over plan. I can force things sometimes. And this happened so natural, so organic. And it was like the perfect guest for today because this is the holiday I like to just celebrate all year. But today is actually International Women's Day. And I'm just so honored. I know that you have so much going on and you have um, huge things that you're working on today. And I can't wait for you to share that with everyone. And, And we have to dig into things that with as many amazing things that Kirstie has going on in her life and how very successful she is in her business, she still needs coaches around her to check in with and find out, Hey, can I look at this a different way? So no matter how much you accomplish, we always need, you know, a little, a little guidance. And so that's why I'm so excited. It's an honor that I get to help you through this because I feel like you help me so much all the time. So thank you. Well, it's, it's a great relationship in that way. I think you're, you know, you're absolutely right that people no matter who they are, no matter what they're doing, they need support from other people and different perspectives. And, you know, where one person is successful in one domain, then someone else is successful in a different domain and we can all help each other. And I I do think on International Women's Day, it's, it is a strength of women. I think women, when they're at their best, do support each other. And, you know, that's, that's what we got when we were um, together in uh, Nashville last month is, you know, a group of women who are absolutely committed to raising their own game, but also in doing so to raise the games of everybody around them. And like, that's, that's when the magic happens. It really is. Oh, that's, that's so true. It's like figuring out that way of always being in a state of expansion, like really cheering for people and knowing that the more everybody has, we, you know, we all get, so it's like, it's so funny. Like I, I think innerly, I've always been that cheerleader. That's like, I want everything for you as much as I want it for like, it's like both we're, um, and I love that. So I think, um, international women's day is such a great time to really celebrate how women can come together and truly support each other. And there's no competition. It's all about collaboration. Completely. I, I, um, I was listening earlier to your episode with, uh, your previous guest with Kelly in your chair and. I was thinking about you and it really was one of the things that I pinned as being one of your absolute superpowers was your ability to be a cheerleader for other people and to support them to achieve their own brilliance. So um, um, I was very beyond excited when we agreed that I was going to come and we were going to have a chat today because 
the the bonus was I was like I get coaching from you as well like that just makes it even better (laughs) right and I was like and I get to have a chat where I get to listen to your amazing accent all day (laughs) <laughs> well not all day Tracy it's, you know it's well, like dinner time the thing is here. is that we'll edit like they'll be editing we'll, we'll share this again so for me yeah, it'll yeah. be all day <laughs> I, I only need a minute of your time right it's like we'll we'll have a chat we have some tea we're gonna have a chat so tell me what are the things that you are currently doing in your business because I think it will be really exciting for our listeners to hear in your words like tell me the things you're currently doing and then I would love to hear you know one to three things that you would like you know to be different so that we hmm. can kind of dig in and help you yeah definitely so the two main things that I do is I run a leadership development business called Firefly which I set up Um, nearly 12 years ago and we work with senior leaders who work with fortune 100 companies who work with um, government healthcare um, providers in the UK and kind of the top the top leaders right chief chief execs board level directors and I love it I'm I I consider it an absolute honor to be able to work with senior leaders and help them to face the challenges that they are and to deepen their leadership impact um But two years ago, I realized I was hiding um, behind this brand that I had built. So I had built a brand, Firefly, and Kirsty Maynard was kind of hidden, um, to be honest. Um, But I ran a workshop for women in frontline policing in Scotland. And I realized that most of them would never become clients because they were, you know, operational police officers. But I also realized that I had things that could help them when they were tackling change in their lives or whether they wanted to face change or whether they were facing it and they hadn't chosen it. There's a lot of books on those shelves. There's a lot of years of studying, like 25 years of doing this stuff. And I thought, okay, I think it's time to get out of my own way and put all of that together in a form that's accessible for women who just need some help and need some tools, skills, resources to help them navigate change. So the first step was to launch the Kirsty Maynard website, which I did 18 months ago. Absolutely terrifying. I emailed my own coach that day saying, what am I doing? <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. I, I did not want to be in the limelight. But I got over that um, because I was doing it for a purpose. And I think that's where leadership really comes into its own. And so fast forward to today, um, International Women's Day 2022, we have just gone live with the new version of the website, which has way more pictures of me on it than I think is actually healthy. But there we go. <laughs> it looks amazing. Sure. I'm really proud of you for that. It looks amazing. And I'll share the links to Kirstie's website um, when we finish. Like, So they'll be there so you guys can check it out because it is amazing. You have done such a great job. And um, it does have a purpose. <laughs> and it, it does have a purpose. You know, like yeah, that's yeah. the whole point, right? You it what does. you do is for a purpose, and you're like being true to you and living in your purpose, and that's where that magic happens. Yeah, I, th- I think for me that that is the place where the magic does happen. And so today, what we have announced on all my social media channels and on the new website is that it is 365 days to the day until my first book is published. So. That's been today's focus and the focus for the last year running up to it, actually. Um, So it's a book called The Woman's Guide to Change. And it is bite-sized pieces of change support. So tools and skills, resources, inspiration. Because let's face it, Tracy, find me a woman who isn't facing change and find me a woman who has endless days and weeks to sit down and read books there aren't any (laughs) I've never met her (laughs) no no, I don't think she exists so um so we've launched on International Women's Day and um yeah the the next year is going to be possibly the busiest year of my life (laughs) what's the funnest the funnest like what is so amazing and you guys will see when you check out Kirstie's website it she has the first chapter already up so you can experience this journey along with her like we're going to do this with you which is amazing yeah yeah the the manuscript exists for the whole book but what we've made available today is a sample chapter so you can register and get the sample chapter and you know again I wanted uh, publishing takes forever I mean you've right you've done it I've got your book it's brilliant and um it just it's it's so much slower than business people are used to I think if you're not in the publishing industry so I didn't like I didn't want to wait another year to give people access to the good stuff. I want to give them it now. (laughs) 
I, I feel your pain. I remember that, but I think you're doing it the right way because I didn't share it out there. So it's like, get it out there. Now we have a year because it does take long. And I, I hope that, um, you don't have this happen. We just, I think we rewrote it so many times. I think I wrote 27 books. So it's like, that was <laughs> right, yeah. like, some people say it's hard to write a book. I'm like, Oh no, that part was easy. It's like the rewrite and the edit did it. Yeah, that's right. that was the challenge but so for some people they like that part and they like the so I think it's all relative yeah I have a week um the, the way that I've been getting the book done is because because I'm so busy right <clears throat> I carve out a week at a time and I go to this little studio down the road um I mean it's tiny but um it's like Airbnb kind of artist mm-hmm. studio uh it's 23 minutes drive from my house so it's not far at all away. But, you but get I'm not away. responsible for anyone or anything there. And I can cocoon myself in that studio and write. And so that's how the book has got written. And I've got a week at the start of April for editing, which, uh, yeah, is going to yeah. be quite a painful week. But I always take a bottle of wine. I do take chocolate and I go for lots of walks. <laughs> that's the best. That's what I did so much, too, when writing and editing. It's like I have to get away where I don't, you know where we don't have to be responsible for people. So I think that's so smart. And that's just a tip for International Women's Day. When you have a big project to get done, it's okay to ask for help and get away. So you can focus on like your hopes and dreams. I think like that's a huge thing that um, we forget to give ourselves permission to do. So I love that you brought that up. Completely. We have permission. We're telling the rest of you, you have permission. Take the time that you need to accomplish things like that. I literally write myself permission slips. I've been uh, I've been running workshops today on um, daring leadership because I'm a facilitator for Brene Brown's work. And uh, like this is today. I don't know if it's is it backwards where you are. <laughs> no, it's perfect. You... Okay, yeah. I give myself permission to be imperfect. imperfect. <laughs> I love that. Uh, you'll like, you'll like I this one. That. I give myself permission to step onto the bigger stage. There you go. So, so exciting. Yeah. I love that you're giving yourself permission. So let, let me, um, I, you have so much going on and you have accomplished so much. So what, like, what's something that is an obstacle or a challenge that you're currently having that we can, you know, kind of help you with today? So I made a list of three. So let, <clears throat> let me set out the three and you can pick which one you want to, <laughs> you want to chew it, us to chew on this afternoon or, or morning for you guys. The first one is um, I really want to find more people that I can collaborate with. Um, it, it, you know, I run a business. I have a great team. I have a strong team of coaches. They really are literally world class um, in terms of what they do. I have a brilliant team in terms of social media support, those kind of things. But it can still be quite lonely, right? You know, when you're out there doing the stuff that we're doing. So I really want to find other people, I guess like you, um, actually, where we can kind of collaborate and play together a little bit. And, um, you know, people that are interested in what you're up to, they're probably interested in some bits of what I'm up to, which is why we're having this chat this afternoon. But I want to find more of them. So that's that's kind of question one is, could we put our heads together and think about where, they, where those people might be? Yeah. Um, the second one is because I'm doing so much and I was thinking about it earlier and I was thinking, well, Tracy used to run a hair salon, right? So she must be good at kind of compartmentalizing her time because you can't cut someone's hair at the same time as you do the marketing strategy, right? I mean, it's not a very good idea. I don't think you want to come back. No, I don't <laughs> want anyone near my head with scissors at the same time as I'm thinking about something else, right? Right. I was thinking time, like, how to compartmentalize my time and structure it on a day-to-day basis. Um, And then the third one, just because it's a perpetual thing on my list of things to get help with is, you know, how to keep recommitting to self-care and in what is going to be the most busy and probably the most fun year of my life. How do I make sure that I don't burn myself out in that? Um, And uh, I thought together we, we could come up with some ideas for that as well. Ooh, I love, these are all so juicy and all my fate. So yeah, so good. So let's just go in order because I think that it'll be fun to start with the collaboration because it's really like, what do you, like, what are you interested in? You know, outside of maybe even just like work, right? Because like, we both love empowering women and we do coach, like we like to write. So there's a lot of, but, but what else maybe outside of, 
business per se mm-hmm. are you interested in? Well, I guess one of the obvious things we haven't talked about is I am a single parent and I have a 16 year old daughter. So anyone who's parenting teens that are getting ready to leave home, because like that's that's a really big shift. Right. For someone that specializes in change, it's going to take every tool I have to to navigate that one. Right. Right, right. Um, So parenting teens um, kind of I, I just my I got caught by some of the books on my shelves that you can't see, but like um, spirituality, um, not in a religious sense, but in a, we're part of something bigger. Um, we're here for a purpose, which I guess links to work, but it's it's kind of not the core of the work that I do. I mean, I've done Zen traditional medicine, Chinese medicine training and stuff before. So I kind of quite like quirky and offbeat things. I love that. So what if you found out who was like an expert at um, parents of teens, you know, mm-hmm. somebody that's like the expert that you are when it comes to change and big executive teams, you know, mm-hmm. and that level, what if you could find an expert that was like somebody that there's a million different things. They don't, I'm not saying just a coach, but somebody that's like an expert at that time of life where there's parents of teens and Mm. all the emotions you're going through. Mm -hmm. Um, And then same thing, like somebody that is an expert in that field of spirituality. It could be, it could be a a local yoga teacher. It could be someone huge on the big stage. There are many layers to that, but possibly partnering up with people that are experts in those fields of interest for you. Mm. Um, then you're sort of, you know, I always find that then, then it's like really exciting relationships. Right. And we're in that place of really, okay, this is so fun because I, you know, there's a lot of, like, kind of like how we met, like you and I both, um, met through our dear friend, Patty Aubrey, who Mm -hmm. has this amazing ability to get the best group of women together and have amazing retreats, you know, where you like, are sharing information and it's so wonderful. And I knew at hello, I'm like, Oh, I love her. Right. We like, so the thing is, is that, um, you just get yourself in those situations that you're gonna be around people that are experts in their field, but you're also interested in it. So then it's that really easy. It's seamless for collaboration, right? Like, like how it happened with us is so natural. Yeah, I mean, what I love about that is both the the kind of the specialism of it and the synergy and the overlap. Um, I kind I was kind of seeing like you know like two halves of a Venn diagram like without the third bit. So it's like, well, you know, if you're a parenting of teams specialist and I'm a change and leadership specialist. Then we kind of each got our own like circles of excellence. But if you put the two together, then it's the bits in the middle. Well, you know, there there will be things that align there. Um, yeah, I've just written down like five, five, five ideas, of even just out of that short conversation. Yeah, so it's just, I, I think you can really have fun with it. Like this is almost the part that's like we're di- you might not know, but you probably know because you're a coach. But like we're dipping a little bit into the self care part too when we yeah. make this list. It's like it should come from a place of joy yeah. and happiness and 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 sort of even being exhilarating to do yeah. that with you know what I mean. So if you um, make your list from that place, I mean, you're going to have a good time and yeah. you might get some business done. <laughs> well, it's, I mean, it is like exactly like you said, it was how we ended up having this conversation today, right? It was just, it's, there are some things that are an easy yes. And what you've just reminded me, which, you know, these are why we have these conversations with other people rather than just talking to ourselves all the time, like is we have the conversation with someone else so that they can remind us of the things that we kind of already know, but we'd forgotten about. So, you know, you just saying to me, Kirsty, like it's supposed to be fun and joyful, not like a slog <laughs> and, you know, pushing water uphill for the next 365 days uh, is fantastic because I think, and I know this isn't just me, but I, but I also know it is me that, I get caught up in it. It's got to be hard work. I was raised to work hard. I got to, you know, we've got to make it hard work. So well, what if it could just be fun and joyful and playful all year? That would be amazing. What is, uh, that is, that is one of um, my biggest, yeah, 
like from upbringing and that's just like how we were raised. Like you want, you got, you have to work hard. If you want to be successful, have to work hard and yes, we're going to work. We have a good work ethic, right? Yep. But it can be fun. Of course. I mean, I've, I've <laughs> had the most like fun. miraculous discovery to me. Yeah. I was saying more to myself, but yeah, for both of us. Yeah. But it's, I mean, it's, it's so true, right? We, we tell ourselves that it has to be hard graft and you can work hard, but also still have fun. They, they don't have to rule each other out. I'm, uh, you, you know this already, but for, for people who are watching this, I am sitting here with a glass of bubbles because it is already half past five in the UK and I am celebrating the launch of the launch. So, um, you know, you can do things like this and still have fun at work. <laughs> this See, is work. I'm so, I'm so proud of you for that. Cause I was like, yeah, let's, we need to celebrate this. It was your idea. Cool. Cheers. <laughs> you, yes, this is a, this is a big day. So then do you feel like you um, can move forward on just coming up with some really fun ideas of who you could collaborate with? Yeah, definitely. And I've got categories and specific people bubbling around in my mind now, which I didn't have before. Yeah, um, yeah which is which is good. So, yeah, thank you. See, that was worth celebrating a, a little bit of champagne and wherever people are, feel free. I have tea, but drink whatever. We're celebrating. We're celebrating it's this amazing stuff, Tracy. It's international Prosecco. woman today. This is amazing. <laughs> I love Prosecco. It's, but yeah, me too. Prosecco today, champagne next year. <laughs> there you go. So um, then the next thing you said was kind of working and more organized. And we have talked about this. I personally... Um, the, the reason I can get so much done, because I, this is a thing that a lot of my friends in the hairdressing world. And then now, since I have expanded out are mm -hmm. like, Oh my goodness, you're so organized. How do you get stuff done? I'm like, okay, I wish like, okay. I so yeah, but <laughs> like, I am a creator at heart, right? Give me a pile of hair. I'm going to make a sculpture. out of it. <laughs> like give me like this completely messed up orange and ridiculous color color hair. I want to make a masterpiece out of it. <laughs> and then give me like all your business operations and your like self-care things, like all the, all the behind the scenes things, how to make all your technology, talk to each other, how to make the tea, give me a pile of that gunk. If for someone, and I love to like put it together and make it all work. They're just like, I see the beauty in this. So here's where it is. As someone that's very creative, I have popcorn of ideas. So yeah. it's like, there is never a shortage for ideas in my world. Now, I know that's not always true for everyone, but there, the ideas can be amazing, but it can also be where you're like, you're going down a rabbit hole of not being aligned with your passion, your purpose. And so what I have found over the years, which was the savior to me, is this something I called working in day tight compartments. Mm -hmm. And I have to give credit to my friend, Peter Mahoney, who actually wrote the foreword for my book, Beyond Common, 12 Essentials to Success. He mm -hmm. was the first person to introduce to me the idea of this. And then I just kept fine tuning it, fine tuning it. And so I have found that when I hold my purpose and not just intentionally in my heart, but when I visualize it, when I see it, so I, I literally have it on an index card. I have to look mm -hmm. at it every day. And I speak the words out loud. When I have that crystal clear, holding that purpose in my heart, visually saying it out loud, all the things, mm -hmm. then I set up that day tight compartments around it. So what mm -hmm. I mean by that is I can create a bunch of content because I work in a methodical way. So it's mm -hmm. like high level, right? So I cannot do a haircut and a color and go do the marketing because nobody mm -hmm. would come back. Right. Mm -hmm, <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so when you're coaching and managing your team, you can't be introducing a brand new, um, client and then also doing your performance reviews with your team because it's yeah. different brain pieces. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I have found for most creatives, and that's primarily what all of us entrepreneurs are mm -hmm. that you need to decide what are your most creative tasks and group mm -hmm. those together. Mm -hmm. And then like, what is more systematic and just, I am following a checklist, but I'm not really using much brain capacity. It's mm -hmm. like, now that list can be, um, 
delegated to more people, yeah. right? Like that's, but there are some things that are on that list that nobody can do, but you. So mm-hmm. des- it's like, decide what's on the list of what can nobody do, but me. Mm-hmm. And then what do I want to do? Yeah. Right. And then work in every capacity to only be doing those things. What I have, what, what I have to do that nobody else can do and what I want to do. Now there's a ton of work in between that both you and I are like always trying to hire more support team members and that type of thing. But the more we're clear in how we set up the day like that, um, that is how the day type compartments works for me. So mm-hmm. just, a, just an example, and we can dive deeper into like how to put this in, because I feel like you have a way more, um, organized methodical approach to how you do things. That's my impression of how it's a good yeah, illusion. No. <laughs> so I think that the, I think we can even put more structure around it because how, the way that I see you thinking, I'm like, okay, I think we can do this at an even higher level. Mm-hmm. So it would look like this, like we're recording this, um, this who's in Tracy's chair today. We yes. could repurpose this on a blog, a, um, like a mini Facebook page. We mm-hmm. could, we could take a snippet of it. And it could be your review because of all the great things that I would naturally say about you from the beginning. It's a review that could go on your Mm -hmm. website. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole thing to all the different ways we could repurpose just this episode of who's in Tracy's chair. That would be beneficial for you. That would be beneficial to all of our listeners and audience. So that's like how I think of stuff. Okay. It's Mm -hmm. like, okay, What's the one thing that's going to make everything else easier? So the more you can group together tasks like that, where you already did that today, like you had all these different lives and Uh stuff Uh and and different presentations you were doing. So today was the day you um, did your hair and let your beautiful curls show you, you know, we did more makeup, like, you know what I'm saying? Like we get ready because we know. So it's like, that takes a lot of energy for some of us women, right? Mm -hmm. Like camera ready. So it's like group yourself to be like all camera ready tasks would be day tight compartment. Right. And then maybe like a brain dump organizational day could be in sweatpants one day Mm -hmm. if you don't have to be on camera. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, lo- I mean, you're no surprise. You're firing off lots of thoughts in my head. Um, I came across the concept a few years ago about big results days. So it's like having like prep days and big results days. And it's kind of similar, right? In terms of batching things that take different types of skills. Um, and I probably do need to try some more of that again. I know myself, the thing that stops me with that sometimes is I have a very, very low boredom threshold. And particularly when it's so um, things like anything to do with accounts or finance and like that kind of stuff, I actually have to do it in small pieces and mix it in with the big, cool, exciting, creative stuff, because otherwise I just lose the will to live. And I'm like, I can't, I cannot sit and do that kind of task for half a day or even a few hours I need to break it up um but you're right in terms of the um you know creating and I guess the other thought you prompted for me is that there are the creating bits that I do for Firefly and there are the creating bits that I do for kirstymaynor.com and actually I could do them together um because I tend to I tend to split Firefly days and non-Firefly days at the moment because it makes it easier for me to schedule my clients Um, but actually there's probably a different way I could look at that. Yeah. That like, I like the idea that you're splitting it because I did that too. I used to like, I used to have, okay, here are my days I'm working on the business. Okay. Here are my days I'm working on the business. Here's the days I'm seeing clients. And Mm -hmm. then here's the days I'm like train doing training for my team. Mm -hmm. Like those were kind of the, then when I started adding in and, um, becoming an author and then the coaching and training business. Then I had one or two days a week that that's all right. That's all I was doing. So it depends if a lot of your tasks are similar Mm -hmm. in your creativity. Yes. And you could do that because then you could get in more clients across the board. Um, cause that's the thing we're always trying to figure out how can we serve more people and Mm -hmm. feel 
not burnt. I mean, basically we're like the opposite of that is like, how can we serve more people and still feel amazing at the end of the day, the end of the week, the end of the month. Right. Yeah. Because this is especially like this year, as you ramp up this, you're creating a, like you're already in demand and we're creating even more demand. So how can we amp this up while still (laughs) you feel protected? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I describe it like those little cartoon characters, you know, the ones that like Roadrunner and Wiley Coyote, yeah. Coyote and those kind of things that build a train track as they're running along the railroad, they're building it as they go. I'm like, that is my life. That is every entrepreneur's life, right? As you go, you're building the railroad for the next section. So yeah, it's a, it's a really good link into the third piece actually around, around self-care. Um, and I don't expect you to have all the answers. I don't expect anyone to have all the answers because I think we're all working out together, but um, particularly in the current context where, do you know what, life keeps throwing curveballs and uh, we really don't know what we're going to have to deal with next. But I guess tips for, or things that you've seen work for other business owners, not so much in terms of practical self-care, right? I train on that stuff. I know how to do, it's more how to keep it front and center when you are busy and when you're going through intense periods, like what helps you to keep that at the core? I make, (laughs) I have one simple thing that works for me, but I make it a point to schedule self-care things with other people. So Mm. here's an example. If you and I were going out for a champagne toast, I would never cancel that Mm -hmm. because Kirsty is expecting me. And I know that about myself. So when I massage, Hey, like, I'm going with my friend to get, even though it's a self-care thing, like when you are just getting started or like you have a busy time of year, like you're about Mm -hmm. to, you know, linking what you need to do for yourself with someone else that you care about spending time with, that is a great way to make sure it happens. I mean, it's so obvious when you say it like that, but it is, it's building in what we would tell any clients about accountability. um, Right. And the the kind of downtime so one of the things I am committed to this year 2022 because it's the last calendar year when my daughter will be home all year is we're having monthly dinner dates um so we've we've had Januarys and Februarys we take it turn about to choose our uh, restaurant and sometimes they're in flash ones and sometimes they're not (laughs) March is going to be really nice Chinese because it's Mother's Day in the UK in March it's my birthday at the end of March and it's um, our monthly dinner date so we're we're um we're kind of splurging I say we're splurging clearly I'm footing the bill but um yeah. you know she might surprise you it's your birthday month right no. she might. Well, it'll she's... still be you'll be paying for it in some way but it'll make her feel good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah that's very true that is very true but but I scheduled that in because I knew you know it's important for us to have time together this year and um that was a way that we were both that we both wanted to commit to um, so you're right in terms of thinking about what I can do to keep that time for me, um, which involves other people and also honors the fact that I'm definitely decided I'm an ambivert. I used to think I was pure extrovert. Now I know that I don't know if it's the pandemic has made me quite like my own company. I quite like time on my own where I don't yeah. have to talk to anyone. I can just wear my pajamas, but I maybe need to just even build in some kind of check in. Yeah, like. One of the other, one of the other things that I have switched over the years is no matter how busy my day is, I schedule my me time first thing. And Mm -hmm. as extrovert as I could possibly appear, if I don't have my me time, my morning routine, I am not the, the me that, um, welcomes all that. It just is different. So there's that thing of like, when when we commit to showing up as our best self in the world, we first have to fill it up. Right. Okay. So that's another thing is like, when it comes to the, the downtime, the alone time with yourself, just to think journal, whatever you, if you exercise or you meditate, um, that, that is like one of those things, whenever I would leave it to like, Oh, I'll do it after work or I'll do it midday. 
I am like, I I know it's like building bumpers. I'm like, it's like bumper. Like when you think of those bowling alleys that have the bumpers for kids, I know I would say yes to something. (laughs) Someone's going to need it. Like something, someone's going to need something from me. And I, and I don't like to not be able to provide it. So what I have to do is schedule my day different. Like I get up earlier and have my time for myself. It's so funny because I write about this in the book as part of the myths. One of the chapters in the book is about the myths of change and why they just don't work for women. And one of the things I talk about is the, you know, you need to get up at five o'clock in the morning and have a power hour. And I've done that. Believe me, it was not an act of self-care. It was an act of desperation because I had no other time in the day when I could do what I needed to do. But what I have discovered is that for me, little bits of time work. So um, I... I'm kind of, I can be quite all or nothing. And I'm sharing that because I imagine some of your viewers might be similar, right? I'm either all in or I'm not in at all. And so with the idea of recommitting to my morning ritual, I was like, I'm going to do it all. I'm going to meditate. I'm going to journal. I'm going to move my body. I'm going to do all the things. And I'm like, you know what? It's just not going to happen. So I started to commit to one bit of it. And I started with meditation, a simple, like using an app, tons of them available, right? But the way I made it work was that I could do it in bed, so I literally my alarm went off I stayed in bed I stayed horizontal I should say I live on my own so I wasn't disturbing anyone else's sleep early in the morning and for 10 minutes I would do my meditation and then I would get up like if I had to get out of bed it just wasn't happening now actually six months down the line I'm now so committed to it and I get so much from it that I'm willing to get up for it so it for me it's about and I I talk about this in the book, you don't have to create change in a giant leap. You can take baby steps. You can crawl if you have to, as long as you keep moving. Um, So you've just reminded me of my own words, which is, which is good. Well, isn't that hilarious? Because that's the thing I did that for the longest time. I have to get out of bed because um, we always have an extra person in our bed anyway. So it's like, I have to get, but I told myself for the longest time, Oh, well, you can sleep. If you're tired, you can sleep. I just had to tell myself that you can sleep like during your meditation. And there were times I fell asleep, Mm -hmm. but the act of like, you're just getting up and routine doing it anyway, is what led me to now have, I think it's been, it's been like five years that I started this morning, routine, but it started out of desperation because five o'clock is the only thing. And it, I had a coach once say to me, um, you're never going to love it stop expecting. And once she said, I was like, you're right. So it's okay that I hate it. I'm just doing it. because. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. And eventually all these years later, and now I would say the last two years have been really consistent. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't give myself a day off. Like I don't take Sunday off because that works for me going yeah. back to all or nothing. The yeah. kind of taking days off is not good. I'm like, so what my family's getting the junk and everybody mm-hmm. else gets the good stuff, the five days a week. So yeah. for me, it was a reframe. Um, and then I also have this, it's called the self-love guide, which just is a guide to walk you through some thought provoking questions Mm -hmm. that you can ask yourself. And it's, there's no right or wrong answer. It's the best kind of test to take, so to speak. But, um, I I'll send you the link and I'll drop the link here. It's just a free guide. And it's just like helping you flush out for you some more practical things that you can do no matter what is spinning in the outside world. I love that. We all need more of that, Tracy. I think in 2022 and probably in the years to come, we all need practical, easy, applicable things that we can do without thinking about them too much, Um, especially all the people who are watching and listening. Like if you're running your own business or you've got anything going on other than, I don't know, just surviving, then we all need those things right now. And one other thing that was coming up for me or for, for you, for me, that I just got an intuitive hit. That's what that, that's how those are. I'm like, is that for me or for you? Okay. But if Both you probably. look, look at your calendar and mm-hmm. literally map out the whole year, not kidding of when you're taking downtime mm. and it doesn't, you don't have to know what you're doing, mm-hmm. but that's like another thing that'll really help you create those bumpers Um, this way, then as you start shifting and fine tuning, like those collaboration relationships, those working in the daytime compartments, the first step should be your self-care. So if you put that at the top where it's just done, then all this new stuff that you want to put in and all the, you know, new stuff you're going to create, 
is going to, you know, only fit into what you have available. Yes, which is why my theme for 2022 is nourish, because I knew that I needed to start with all of that That's in order to be able to achieve the goals. Normally I start with the, the theme and then I work out the goals but this year the goals were so clear I was like right what theme is needed to support the goals and that's that's our nourish game I love that you worked backwards and that your word is nourish because who doesn't need that right now more than ever that's what people need yeah exactly I love it so um what a great chat I know this is, this has been so, so exciting. And, you know, I could, I I just could listen to you chat all day. So (laughs) we could keep talking all day, but (laughs) I know we could just have, that's the funniest thing ever. So what else do you have going on to celebrate this? Um, the chapter release of your, your book that's coming next year. Well, it is heading towards 6 PM. So I have a few more work things to do today on my, uh, on my very long, uh, not created by me Trello board um, that I have just been ticking my way through. Um, so I've got a couple more things to do uh, this evening. Uh, but my pajamas are going to be calling me very soon. In fact, the order of the evening goes, say hi to my daughter who's actually not feeling well, but will have come home while we've been talking. Um, check off the things off the list. Make sure the dog is happy and um, sleeping, put the pajamas on and then crochet probably because that's one of my unwind ways, making a baby blanket for a friend. So um, I'm gonna gonna probably do that and maybe watch Gilmore Girls with my daughter. So very low key celebration. This time next year, we're already planning which restaurant we're gonna be going to and who's coming with us. So um, that will be a very big celebration. (laughs) I love, love, love that. That's amazing. And can I ask you a question only because this just came up, this is totally nothing to do with what we've been talking about, Mm -hmm. but you and I talked about this once before, and I think our audience would love it. Mm -hmm. Tell me how, you know, the difference between a good and a great haircut, because we talked about this and you had such a great answer for your own head. And I think it's important for other people to hear this. I'm trying to remember what I would have said, but what I, well, what I think makes the difference for me is a haircut that lasts the test of time and where um, I don't have to do much to it, particularly for curly hair, because I think um, you and I, we were talking about curly hair, right? And my hairdresser is Edinburgh based stylist and she's fabulous. Um, Well, I think so anyway. And you, and you, and and you agreed with me. So that's good. I checked out her work and yes, I was like, I I give this (laughs) approval. Yeah. Um, I give this approval. I think with curls, you have, they have to be, for me, it has to be natural and it has to be a way of kind of accentuating the positives and and being easy to maintain. And with curls, you know, many, many years ago, I had like shocking red hair that I straightened every day. I'll send you a picture sometime, Tracy. We can, I'll, I'll dig one out. Um, and the day I stopped using the straightening irons was the day when I actually acknowledged so much else in my life that I couldn't control. <laughs> So it was, it became, became symbolic because when you accept natural curls, you accept that they will do their thing. The one will go one way, one will go the other way. They'll wander around a little bit. You know, one will be tightly curled. One will be ridiculous. So yeah, I don't know if that's what I said to you when we talked before, but that would be what would occur to me now. But I love that because it's so true. Like all things in life, that is the thing with curly hair. Yeah. If you, you just embrace where you are. Right. And when you have a great haircut that allows the sort of, um, ebb and flow, it's not going to be the same every day. And that's the really wonderful thing. And that I think is the true test of like, when we look and feel our best, it's like, we're just showing up with, you know, things that work for us and doing the best we can. Like that, that's exactly, that's so true for curly hair and us as humans. So I love how that ties together. Exactly. I thought that there's so much about hair that fits with like, um, life and like philosophy of life I love it yeah the story about the straighteners is in the book it's not in the sample chapter but it is in the book uh, oh interesting yeah see the day you decided okay I can't control this and that is true I've I've had that experience with a lot of clients in the hair world and then clients in business you know it's like the more we like trust the process and relinquish control myself included this is for us all I am not an (laughs) expert I am learning this too it doesn't everything else flow into place. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely. 
Well, thank you so much for being here today. It, no, ha- it has you. been such a pleasure. And I hope that you, um, you know, have the three things that you found some, some usefulness and that this is yeah. helpful, helpful for you. Yeah, definitely. And you know, I'll be checking in because I'm quite good at my accountability. <laughs> you are. Yes. And I would love to know from everybody else, like, tell us about your like experience from this episode of who's in Tracy's chair. Let us know what you want to see more of, um, what you wish Kirstie would dive into more because we could bring her back. So there's so much fun in doing this and I love ha- always presenting a surprise guest. So thank you. My pleasure. And we'll definitely do it again when the book's live. Yes. Oh, I can't wait. Well, you go enjoy your celebration and ha- have you. another sip of that Prosecco and I will talk to you soon. Kirstie. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye for now. Thank you.